Hello everybody and welcome back to another tutorial on the channel of Twin Plays. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to make a Dead Roll Games on Roblox. Specifically, Taki, I'm going to be just showing you the basics of setting up the game. And first of all, we're going to be starting with the track, uh, you know, rail system itself. Um, now, I did actually get some help from a few people on DevForm and as well as uh, Genome Code. So feel free to go check them out. Um, but yeah, I mean, rather than that, we're going to get straight into this. Um, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. We are almost at 100,000 subscribers and I just want to grind, get this out of the way. More subscribers is more tutorials. Um, I'm probably planning on doing um, like just actually building the the cart itself in the next video so yeah just stay tuned i'm gonna kind of explain them see some things for you guys it's gonna take a second but um yeah so we're gonna go and you're gonna hop into studio now you can actually go to my profile if you want to just download this game itself i don't have a model for it i actually just have like the um the, the game itself so first of all we're just gonna go and i'll just show that to you real quick so like i said everything's in the description so if you want to go grab the link below it'll be down there it's just this game kit right here you can hit this button right here and hit edit in studio or you can hit the like download button whatever's easier for you but feel free to open this up um i am going to be updating this every day i mean every time i make a tutorial so you know i'm not gonna be making models for this you're just gonna have to stay tuned and kind of understand what's going on um i will be doing you know understandings of how everything works um but yeah so as you log into this, um, now, if you want to upload this, first things you're going to do, and I'm going to show you a few things, of course, pretty sure Dead Rails is R6, but you're going to head into game settings. Now, um, you can change the name here, description, uh, you know, fill out this thing, this questionnaire, this always has to do with, you know, is it suitable for ages nine and plus, um, screenshots, all that jazz, communication, you can turn on microphone, I recommend it. Um, and of course, later on, we're going to be going into the lobby systems and you know how to do lobbies and everything like that. Uh, monetization. You know, don't worry about this for now. Security, I definitely recommend that uh, you have all of these enabled just for the future. Um, I mean, you don't really need this enabled right now, but uh, definitely have these just in case. Third-party teleports, we'll definitely have to do because we will have to be doing lobby systems. Um, but yeah, localization. Now, our Avatar, I did R6 um, just because I'm pretty sure that's how they did it in the game. And we can kind of go into that later. But um, yeah, so once you do that, just click save. Super easy to do. Um, but yeah, you're going to few see a few things. Now, um, if you really want to understand in great, great depth of everything what the scripts do, uh, go ahead and check out um, Gnome's code online on YouTube, and I'll, I'll link it in the description for this. Um, I do have this already kind of printing for you to kind of show you what's going on, and I made just a little track system for you. Um, but yeah, basically what happens is we set up a track system. So uh, basically you're able to go and use the tracks to go wherever you want to go. Um, and of course, when it ends, you're not gonna be able to go anywhere else. Um, you are also, it makes it so you cannot go backwards. Now that's basically it. It's just a track. There's nothing to it with, um, you know, fuel. We're gonna need to learn how to do fuel. We're gonna talk about braking. Um, there's a lot of things you can actually do with this train and of course we'll do like sounds and you know animations things like that so it's gonna take a sec this is gonna be definitely a series for sure um, but I definitely want to you know get this out in the meantime because you know why not um, but yeah so going off of this I'm gonna kind of explain it to you guys because it's actually kind of easy to understand I mean in, in a some some sort now when it comes to these parts you know you could have a track system and you could just use the math and just do math to go across and just you know get you across the train having you welded across but the only thing a problem with that is there's there can definitely be some issues um so one of the thing i definitely think is one of the biggest is yes if you have hackers in your game you definitely don't want people just going full forward and you know being able to change values and you know messing with the game's logic um so when we're doing this i'm going to make sure that you know people can't do that um, so we're going to be using a prismatic constraint. Now, I don't have the correct definition for it, but I'm actually, let me just get this really quick for you. But I definitely want to go into this with you guys because it's something to learn. Um, so it's, it's a joint, of course, between two attachments. Um, and it's, yeah, slide one axis, but not rotate. It's just through the X axis and the Y axis. Now, um, there's a lot of things you can do with this, you know, lower limit, upper limit, which I'm going to go into size and speed. But um, going off of that, I want to show you guys this real quick. 
this was a great post that kind of talks about what I was going off of here, how someone made a Dead Rails game, but it was kind of off of just, you know, mechanical constraints um, or just, you know, other other things, you know, just going through a motor. But, um, you know, this guy, main, uh, he kind of went off and talked about the prismatic constraints um, that works to push apart, allowing you to transport players and objects, um, you know, not fully functional, um, but it's good for certain things like this. It's like you want to use it for like an elevator or like a train, for example. Um, but yeah, this guy goes greatly into it because he kind of talks about, um, you know, where we're going to be doing, you know, network owner, things like that. And um, honestly, like this is just like a perfect example of kind of what we programmed. But it, it, there's a lot of pros and cons. Um, and yeah, so basically, I'm going to show you how this is set up. Okay. In Workspace, you have a thing called train. This is going to be your train. Um, we are going to build around it and do some things. Of course, I'm going to give you guys the train fully built. I'm actually planning on doing that. Um, it's just not in the meantime because I actually wanted to get this tutorial out for you guys and understand, you know, the basics of it. Um, so yeah, inside here we have a few things. Okay, we have the vehicle seat, which is just right here. We have the engine and then we have the uh, base, which is basically the platform kind of. Um, but yeah, so um, one thing first, if you guys can't see these green attachments, you're going to go to the model tab, okay? You're going to look at constraints. Now, um, this kind of shows you all of the attachments. So if you look at the prismatic constraint, it basically has, um, we have attachment, which is going to the, um, the engine itself. And then we're going to be having it go to the uh, track, the track itself. Um, now we have an end attachment. And then of course, all the way at the end, we have an upper attachment. Now going and explaining into those, um, let's kind of talk about what's inside both of these real quick. So the vehicle seat and the base, they're just well constrained um, to do that and make sure you guys are needing to do this. Nothing should be anchored. Um, let's say you wanted to like, you know, move around or make new things. Um, you'll have to use weld constraints. So easily enough, you know, if I wanted to start building, you know, I could go right here and we would actually want to inside here. I definitely would recommend, you know, making a folder, which we'll go into, but we're calling, we're going to call it extras. Um, and then, you know, in here you can put the part and you can just put this on the side or like whatever you want to do to design your train, um, in the future or whatever. Um, we're basically doing this and then you can actually just go to model. You see this little create tab right here. You're going to click this part and you would go from the base. You know, you want to weld the base. And so you just click the weld and that would weld it together. So you don't have to anchor it and everything like that. So, um, I'll just say this to design for the next video and other things like that. There's something, some things we'll go into in general. Um, but yeah, so in here we have a client script. Now this is a normal server script, but it's actually on the client side. Um, and what we're doing is, sorry, if I run context, it's through the client, um, which basically gets pushed towards the server. Um, but, you know, it's, I guess you could say it's from the client side. Uh, but, yeah, so we have a web created storage, uh, train, seat, and throttle remote. The throttle remote is kind of just what we're firing to the server. And by doing that, we're doing the seat, get property change throttle. So that's basically just when someone sits in this, um, there is a throttle property. Um, and which is kind of talking about, you know, if someone's pressing the W key or they're pressing forward, it's going to give us that value. Um, and so, yeah, so you basically sit down right here and, um, in the engine, this is the main thing, which I'm going to talk about. Um, we have the prismatic constraint. Okay. So we have a lower limit and an upper limit. Now, when it comes to designing this, I had some issues and I want you guys to try and stick with what I'm doing. Okay. If you want to make your own, like I try to do something cool. If you want to make this different, it's not too hard. You just got to make sure you're doing it a little different. Okay. So if we were to copy this, I want you to pay attention to a few things. Okay. So we have inside the model, which I'm going to go into these tracks in a sec. Um, we have the thing called the upper and the lower constraint, lower limits. Okay. And so that's basically for zero. This is, this is the zero. Like we're starting at the end, the beginning, and then we're going to the, the end, which is a hundred. So in the new track model, let's say right here, sorry. Um, we have the track. Yeah, sorry. This is, this is the zero. And then the end would be the upper limit, which in the prismatic constraint. So upper limit means, so we're going from end to the finish right here. Now what's important to look at is, um, yeah, where, where does it end? I mean, this one seems, I think I did this a little too high. I don't know why I went up a little bit like that, but, um, either way <laughs> going off of that. Um, basically what happens is we're going to connect them and we want to find, you know, is, is it at the end or is it not? If it's not at the end, then we're, um, we're going to just connect them to the second track. Um, we want to find the next track, which I kind of want to talk about in terrain. This is the train target. Okay. Now this is what we're going to be using to, um, see if 
So if, if it hits and it's on this line, that let's say the circle's right here, if it goes towards the end right here, then that means we've hit our target. And then we're basically going to get them onto the next track. I'm kind of explaining it like that. And we're using attachments. That is in the terrain, so don't touch that. But um, what I was trying to tell you guys about building this um, is you don't want to, you want to be careful with how long it is because when it comes to upper and lower limits, let's say your track right now. So as you can tell, the size is 100. So if I were to go and just, you know, build this out to, uh, you know, whatever, 126 it looks like. So if I were to go and build this out to 128, you would need to make sure that upper limit is up to 128. So it's basically making sure you're lining up the tracks with each other. Now, this is really the only thing. You only need this track. So I could literally delete this design and have the track. So honestly, it's kind of set up for you. But like I've said, you definitely want to make sure you're being careful with the length. Um, honestly, I would just keep it the same length and just duplicate it. And if you want to just, just uh, change the design, all you have to do is just change these things. Like um, it's, it's pretty simple to do. Um, and yeah, nothing to worry about rather than this invisible part, which you can honestly, while you're designing, you can turn the transparency down and it will help you see where you're building around the track. Um, but yeah, so going forward, um, let's say you want to build another track. You just go right here and you want to make sure you can, you, you get them right at the end. So see right there. And you'd call this track model three. Um, pretty simple enough to do that. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to kind of explain that, how that works, but yes, going with the prismatic constraint. Um, basically what's happening is we're starting at zero. We're going to a hundred. Now this talks about the motor max acceleration and the max force and the velocity. So if I were to put this at 10, it's going to just start going all them automatically. Velocity is changed when we use the throttle. Um, but yeah, so this acceleration, you can kind of mess with this how you want. I kind of think 10 is good, but honestly, I'm probably going to mess around and give you guys some new things. We can, uh, when it comes to the settings and we're going to, you know, make it more realistic, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's a later kind of thing right now. But so this is the engine it all works through here. Um, and then of course you have the track models and I'll show you how to curve them too, which is kind of cool, but, um, yeah, train handler. So this is going to be the main script and uh, we, which we can talk about. So server, the client script is uh, whatever, it's going to come towards the server and there's a few things. Okay. So this is the server script service. We're using replicated storage player service and the run service. Now, uh, we grab the local. So these are our local variables. I should probably do a little more of uh, some context for you guys, but grabbing all the local variables, basically everything in the workspace that we need. And we're grabbing the target attachment. Um, we have the throttle remote. We have a max speed of 30. So if you guys want to mess with this, you can change that. Um, like I said, we'll probably mess with this later and make it more realistic. We have a current track number. Okay. So we have our current track is one, which I'll kind of explain right here. Um, the driver is nil because we don't have a driver um, and the engine, which is the train dot engine. We're going to set the network owner to nil. So basically that means the server has full ownership. So kind of saying like um, a hacker, basically, you know, it's kind of making it so they can't touch it. Um, we're going to do a run server heartbeat, which is this is the main script right here. But I'm going to go into this right here. So see, get property change signal. So if someone sits in the seat, we're going to find the occupant. If there is no one in the seat, we're going to set the drivers to nil. So if they get out, no driver. Um, if they, we're going to grab the player by um, going to players and then get player from character and then seat.occupant.parent. So that's basically getting their character. If there's not a player, we're going to return it, you know, end it, no worries. If there is, we're going to do driver equals play. Now that's a good way of just double checking with certain things. Like I was talking about, if you know, there's a player driving it, if they're not a player driving it with hackers, blah, blah, blah. Throttle remote. So on the server event, when we send that up from the, the client side, we're basically going to grab the player and the throttle. So the throttles like, you know, making sure we're grabbing uh, what they're what they're pressing to go forward or not. If the player, um, if there's no driver um, base, if the player is not the driver, sorry, um, then we're not going to do it. Uh, but what's going to happen is uh, right here, we're going to do the velocity. So this is kind of talking about when I was saying how if it, I put it at 10, it's going to just start driving automatically. So this is where we configure that, you know, the driving part. So we're going to use math.clamp and then throttle negative one and one, and we're going to times it by the max speed. So it's like 20 ish, um, but you're, you're going to kind of times it by the max speed and, um, and it stays within a certain range. So it's not going above that. Um, but yeah, so right here is the main script. So going in with this Delta time, the seconds between each frame, basically local track equals tracks. And then we're going to the track here. Okay. This track folder. We're doing track model one. Um, this is gonna be the current track number. So it's like basically saying track model 
one is, and one is current track number that which we have set on automatically local next track though is going to be tracks fine first child track model dot current track number plus one so it's going to be two so you have to make sure you're naming these okay this kind of goes off with the avatar game we were talking about now local progress you're, this is where we kind of talk about the progress oh and i need to delete this so you don't have to see that every time but it basically goes and checks from zero to a hundred um but we're doing it in a matter of one number not you know in a whole number um so basically we're gonna grab that current position of the prismatic constraint so what i was talking about is we're basically grabbing this this little orange thing right here i guess you could say and we're checking where it is on the path so we're going all the way to the end and this is when it reaches one when it reaches one so let's say it reaches one right here we're gonna do 0.99 because we never know if it's gonna exactly reach one um and we have the next track which means there is a next track so if there is a track model two we're gonna keep them going forward if there isn't an end so after this track model three that's where we're gonna stop them that's where they can't move any forward anymore but basically current track number plus equals one that means we are going to basically now go and set the current track number to three let's say so we're on right here we are basically on two and then now we're making it three so now we're going to say they're on track model three then uh oh actually sorry we're on one at the beginning and then we go to two um and then we go to three or whatever but yeah target attachment so this is the target attachment so that was kind of telling you about that train and target um basically where it is set Do, this doesn't really matter where it's set it's just you kind of want to have it in the same spot just in case um but basically it's setting the world.c frame um the world c frame to the next track so next track is going to be primary part and you have to make sure these primary parts are the same also when it comes to building these tracks i forgot to mention uh make sure the primary part is set to the track right here um so once you do that it's going to go primary part which is this track track attachment and then world.c frame so when i was mentioning that you see how this is the end so when it reaches um when it reaches this part the target attachment is going to be set to the end of model two so it's like this one it's going to be set to that then we are going to set the lower limit to zero and that's kind of where we do the whole thing over again it's like just repeating the process um from from here it's just going next track next track next track else if it's not the same we're going to set the lower limit to its current position so it's basically sorry if, if we're out of tracks it's going to set the lower limit to the highest limit is what would happen so you would go from like 100 to 100 and i'll kind of i'm going to play this real quick and show you guys um and yeah sorry when i was going off of uh if you want to rotate it i think the best way to do this is actually just go like this and then um you can use uh our communities this is a good like plugin to use i don't know how much you want to turn it it depends up to you but if you hit render so what is this I'm not really the best with this plugin actually um okay so i can go here and this is gonna be four so um like this i think that should work either way um and yeah you slowly turn it you know how that works um but yeah so i'm gonna kind of show you how this works when you go and log into it um and play it um, and yeah, as you can tell, my characters are six, very simple. Um, but yes, yeah, so you just get on right here. Now, if we look in the, the workspace while we're doing this and we go to engine prismatic constraint, I'm going to talk to you about this real quick. So lower limit, pay attention to this lower limit while I'm driving. So see how it's going and see these, these constraints right here. Boom. So it basically set the path to go forward to the next one. Um, yeah. And going off of that, it's, it's pretty simple to kind of understand that, but yeah, see, every time I'm going, it's setting a new, new lowered limit for me and it's going forward. So now we're going forward and we're changing path. And then once we hit the end, boom, see this lowered limit still kind of saying at the top or whatever, and you can't, you can't go back. There's no way of going backwards, but yeah, so that's basically it. It's, it's pretty simple. It's a little track system. Um, nothing too crazy. Uh, I want you guys, you know, in the description, just kind of give me like examples of what you want. Um, it's up to you guys, you know, I'm kind of just want to think of some things, but yeah, you guys let me know. And I, I really hope you did enjoy this tutorial. I'm going to get out a bunch more soon here. Just wanted to explain it as much as I can for you guys. And yeah, there's going to be some cool tutorials coming out very soon here. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.